guys, good morning. Happy Sunday to you. Teacher Mian here. Well, now you've had one full week of school already. I wonder how uh, the week has been for you. I hope that it's been a positive and fun and really just enjoyable start to the school year. One of the things I wanted to suggest to you guys to make this year successful is to really commit and dedicate this entire year, whether it's school, whether it's home life, and anything else to the Lord and ask Him to use you to glorify Him in all that you do. So in your thoughts, in your actions, in the way that you study, in the way that you relate to your parents and even to your siblings, that all these things be a worship unto the Lord. And He will give you the strength and He will give you the ability and the power to do that for His glory and for your good. He's going to bless you in that. And so do that, try it and see what the Lord does. So for now, let's go ahead and stand up. Let's do some body worship. Let's praise the Lord. And then we will see you right back here. Yeah, I got power. 
There's one body and one spirit Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call There is one body and one spirit Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, if you're like me, uh, you have never appreciated rain so much in your life. In all the years that I've lived here in Oregon, I've never seen uh, anything quite like the wildfires and the smoke and the horrible air quality that we have experienced the last uh, couple of weeks. And um, I'm just so thankful that God answered our prayers and that He sent rain. You know, I remember the, the moment that I first saw the lightning. I was putting Aaron and Emmy down to bed for the night and we were in the dark and I saw something flash um, and I wasn't sure if it was just my eyes being tired or not but then a few minutes later I saw it uh, again and there was more and more lightning and then I saw um, through the skylight the lightning come through and I started to hear the thunder and I just started to say thank you God thank you for your mercy and there was a moment for me to worship God in the darkness of that room with my children next to me you know sometimes it's hard to understand why uh, God does things a certain way and why he allows certain things to happen like these wildfires and maybe you've heard stories um, of people losing their homes and their businesses people even losing uh, their lives and really everything but I've also heard stories of, of God doing amazing things through uh, through His people, through churches, through people that love Him, that are sharing and, and helping um, and feeding people and, and even taking them into their homes. And so even in the midst of all the horrible things that are going on, we continue to see God working. And so I pray that that encourages you and that 
really builds your trust in God's love and care for this world and for you and for me you know and I believe that God is doing something and the reason why he waited to even send rain was to make us more desperate for him that as we look to him and as we wait for him um, and as we wait for his answer we draw closer to him and we realize you know God is who he says he is and when he answers we just kind of erupt in this worship and praise so I pray that that is your response to him uh, as you see God moving and God answering prayers in the middle of all that is going on you know sometimes it's hard to understand uh, what God is teaching us um, and today we're also going to hear some stories about Jesus teaching hard things hard lessons that many people really struggle to accept and to understand you know, when Jesus was on earth, um, he taught people about God and God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is anywhere and wherever God is ruling. So he is ruling over us now, but one day his kingdom will come fully when Jesus returns to the earth. So as you listen to today's story, think about our big picture question and answer, which is how does God care for his creation and the answer is that God loves and cares for his creation according to his perfect plan today's Bible story uh, it took place after Jesus fed the crowd of more than 5,000 people do you guys remember that with just five loaves of bread and two fish it's not that much food and the people who had seen Jesus's disciples uh, cross the sea they knew that Jesus had stayed behind and so when they found Jesus with his disciples on the other side they were completely surprised and shocked and they didn't realize that Jesus that he had walked on water to meet his disciples in the middle of the night and so the crowd had these questions for Jesus so let's find out what they talked about our story today comes from John chapter 6 and so I want you to open your Bibles to chapter 6 of the Gospel of John and go ahead and just put your finger there or your hand there bookmark it and go ahead and listen to the story for today it said a crowd of people went looking for Jesus they had seen him perform miracles like feeding more than 5,000 people they went to Capernaum and found Jesus on the other side of the Sea of Galilee teacher when did you get here they asked Jesus answered why are you looking for me did you want to find me because I can do miracles or were you looking for me because I gave you food? If you're seeking food, remember that food on earth will perish. Perish means to go bad or eventually to, to rot so that it doesn't last forever. Search for food that gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give it to you. This food never goes bad. The people asked, what does God want us to do? Jesus said, believe in the one whom he has sent. The people said, what will you do for us to make us believe? Will you do another miracle? The people wanted bread from heaven like Moses and the Israelites receive in the wilderness. And Jesus said, God the Father gives true bread from heaven. I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. And no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. Jesus explained that the Father had sent him to do God's plan. And God's plan is that everyone who sees Jesus, God the Son, and believes in him will have eternal life. The Jews began complaining because Jesus said he came from heaven. Isn't this the son of Joseph, they said? Jesus said again, I am bread of life. I came from heaven. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not live forever. And when Jesus said this, many of his followers said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Many of the people who had followed Jesus turned away from him. And Jesus asked his 12 disciples, Do you want to go away too? And Peter answered, Lord, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Amen. After the crowd saw Jesus' miraculous feeding of the 5,000, you know, they went looking for him, obviously, right? I would too. Where is this guy, right? But Jesus, they knew that they were looking for him for the wrong reasons. They, he could see straight into their heart and he knew why. 
Rather than following Jesus and following him because they believed he is the Messiah, they wanted to follow him because they believed that he could provide or give them food for their hungry stomachs. And Jesus wanted the people to seek something greater than just physical food that they could see and they could eat and, and be full with. He wanted them to find eternal life in him. The people asked Jesus, what does God want us to do? And how did Jesus answer? Let's look at John chapter 6, verse 29. So I'll give you a few seconds to find verse 29. In verse 29, it says, Jesus told them, this is the work, the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. People don't need to do anything to earn eternal life. They only need to believe in Jesus, God's Son. And that goes for you and that goes for me. When we trust in Him, He gives us the free gift of salvation, forgiveness from our sins, and life with God forever. You know, the people had a hard time believing that this Jesus who grew up in Nazareth as, Je or as Joseph's son, that he was actually the Son of God who had come from heaven. So many people misunderstood Jesus' teaching and they didn't, didn't agree with everything that he taught. What did Jesus say that caused many people to turn away from him? And we find that in uh, John chapter 6, verses 53 and 60. So go ahead and scroll down from 29 to verse 53. I'll give you a few seconds. So in 53 it says, So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. And in verse 60, it says, Many of His disciples said, This is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? And Jesus said to His followers, they needed to eat his flesh and drink his blood in order to have eternal life. Is that what Jesus really meant? Did he want people to eat his body? What do you guys think? The people did not know what was going to happen to Jesus. Jesus was going to give his body by dying on the cross for our sins and he was going to shed his own blood to rescue people from sin and death and that's what Jesus was talking about you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood is that you have to receive these things from me you have to be willing to believe that I did this for you and so we eat and drink when we take the Lord's Supper by trusting in Jesus's death and resurrection he wasn't saying you need to eat my body, but he was saying you need to receive what I'm giving to you. You need to, to receive my, uh, my forgiveness through the, the body, my body on the cross, and the shedding of my blood that gives you forgiveness of your sins. And so what is the Christ connection here? Jesus wanted to do more than just fill people's stomachs. He doesn't just want to make us not hungry. He wanted to give us true life. He wanted to give these people true life. So Jesus' teachings were hard to understand. When Jesus talked about his flesh and his blood, he was talking about his death and his resurrection. And so when we trust in Jesus, he gives us the gift of eternal life. God sent Jesus into the world at just the right time. And Jesus came to rescue people like you and me from our sins. And this is good news. Jesus rules as king over creation. and He wants everyone to turn away from uh, their sin and turn to him. And so just a, a review of our big picture question. How does God care for his creation? He loves and cares. Or he loves and rules over his creation according to his perfect plan. So let's stop and let's pray. And let's thank God for this incredible gift of the person of Jesus. God, we see in the Bible that people had a hard time believing and accepting this lesson from Jesus. And Lord, we confess that sometimes it's hard for us to believe, it's hard for us to accept all your teachings. But Lord, would you give us faith, would you give us wisdom to know and to understand, Father, what you are saying to us in your word. We thank you for Jesus through whom we have eternal life. 
and we pray that we would receive and accept God his sacrifice on the cross um, and all that he gives us God when we trust in him so give us faith give us understanding give us again wisdom to know your truth we thank you Lord for your love for us in Jesus name we pray amen all right, guys, I think this is one of those stories that is worth reading over again and talk with your, your parents, with your brothers and sisters about what it means when Jesus says, eat my flesh, eat my body, and drink my blood in order to have eternal life. I do pray that you guys would continue to grow in your relationship and understanding of Jesus and the Word uh, as you read it and as you pray. And when you do those things, God will open up your heart and open up your eyes to see Him for who He is. So continue to do that in the midst of all your studies. I hope you guys have a great week. Do all that you can to glorify the Lord in all of your actions and all of your thoughts and deeds. And we will see you next week. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Please join me for praying for the offering. Father, we thank you for all your blessings this week. We're mindful of the rain, uh, even the thunder and the lightning, ways that remind us that you are in control and that we are not. We thank you that you're so good to us, God, and that in your faithfulness and your kindness towards us, you give us all that we need. Even those who, who do not know you, you bless and you provide for uh, you care for them you show them your love in so many different ways so lord we pray that you would accept this offering that we give to you please use it for your glory that people might come to know you and that people would worship you and have eternal life we thank you for your love and for all the ways that you show us your uh, your knowledge of our life uh, and again your goodness and your care for us thank you in jesus name we pray amen Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.